Welcome to the Jada and Stitchy Show, and welcome to February. It's time for the second installment in our 2024 calendar blanket project, Granny's Magical Cupboard. We're making 12 unique granny squares this year, one per month, and if you missed January, it's linked in the description box down below for you. So what are we doing for February? Well, let me introduce you to the Doubles and V's Granny Square. This granny square utilizes stitch concepts from the solid double crochet granny square and from the V-stitch granny square. Both of those squares we have tutorials for. We've got them linked in the description box down below. And you can also use either of those patterns if you like in addition to the squares we're learning this year. Just remember, if you're going to include those other squares to use the same hook, the same kind of yarn, and to make them the same number of rows. And we'll talk row count in a second. The doubles and V's square has a really neat solid look and open work, and they sit opposite each other, which gives it kind of a, an hourglass shape, or Mr. and Stitches says he sees arrowheads. I love this pattern in a solid color too, because that stitch work just does all the talking for you. I did a two color one in this block, so the first three rows are gold and the last three rows are blue. And in today's pattern, uh, I'm going to also show you three different colors. So I made the first four rows all the same color, and then I finished it with a little edging in blue and a little edging in white, uh, just to kind of keep that white, blue, and yellow theme going for my blanket. But remember, you can use whatever colors you want. Now, this square, you might find, kind of wants to push sideways and maybe not be as tall. So if you turn it this way, you might see that it looks a little bit tall. This looks a little bit wide. It's perfectly square. Just make sure that all of your rows have the right number of stitches per side and you'll be fine. It's just the nature of the pattern. All of this year's patterns are going to act a little differently. They're going to act on our tension a little differently, but as long as you have the right row count and the right stitch count, you'll be fine. And if it really drives you crazy, go ahead and block your squares. I know some of you are doing that. I'm just going to wait until I'm putting them all together um, and then I'll block the whole blanket when I'm finished because I know that if I have the right stitch count and the right row count, they're all going to be nice to their neighbors. <laughs> Some of you have been asking whether or not it's okay if your squares are a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. You've been asking if you can add rows or not. And in last month's video, we did say that we would tell you if a square can size up infinitely or not. All of the squares in this year's blanket pattern can be made six rows as I'm making them, seven, eight, nine, even 10 rows if you want to go up that high, that's perfectly okay. Um, and it's not going to change the look of the pattern. All of them will scale up a little bit more than say just the six rows that I'm doing. But some of them don't scale up infinitely. And we're always going to let you know if they do or don't. This particular pattern will infinitely scale up if you want to keep making it larger and larger and larger. But because of the nature of this particular pattern, I build it going always in the same direction, and if you want to make it more than 9 or 10 rows, then instead of always going in the same direction, you might want to look at reversing direction for every row. That will just help keep the natural lean that kind of occurs in a square if you always go in the same direction and you keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger. The lean isn't a big deal. It does drive some people crazy, and I just want you to be aware of that if you were going to make this a whole lot bigger. But anything up to 9 rows, even 10 rows, is still going to look perfectly fine if you just make it in the same direction like I do for the 6 rows that I show you in today's tutorial. I will explain this a little bit more in today's tutorial, but I wanted to say that up front because I know a lot of you are experimenting with different sizes and different row counts. And one more thing about rows. If you want to make your squares bigger, say you want to make them more than six rows, you want to make them seven rows or eight rows, make sure you're making them all the same number of rows. That's every square in this year's blanket because you need them all to have the same stitch count along the sides. That's how we're going to be able to join them together and make sure that the blanket looks even. Don't forget, if you'd like a written pattern to go along with today's tutorial, you'll find it over in our Etsy shop. We've got that linked in the description box down below. And a gigantic thank you to everybody who has popped in and picked up a pattern recently. Your support of our show goes an awful long way. Thank you so much. So, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the doubles and V's granny square together. In order to make our February square, you're going to want to use the same hook and yarn you've been using for the previous square if you're joining all these together into the same project. I'm using a size 4 medium weight acrylic yarn. You need about 40 yards total for a single square. So if you're going to use all one color, it would be 40 yards of one color, but if you're going to break it up, it will affect how much of each color you need. 
You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. I prefer to use some stitch markers on my corners just to keep track of where I am. And the hook I'm using is a five and a half millimeter, also known as an I or a nine. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Granny squares are worked from the center outwards. So whatever color you want for row one, which is the middle of your square, you're gonna grab that. Now you can alternate colors every row. You can do the whole thing one color. You can do it half and half like I've done here. Today I'm gonna to use three colors, but I'm gonna make most of my square yellow. So my first four rows will be yellow, row five will be blue, and row six will be white. I'm gonna show you how to change colors, but it's basically the same as we did last month. If you wanna change colors, the easiest thing to do is to just fasten off at the end of the row and join your new color in a corner. I'll get to that when we get there. Let's start with a slip knot on our hook. We're gonna chain five. And we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the first chain to make a ring. And that ring should fit over the top of your finger. We're going to begin with a chain of four. This chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one. Into the ring, you're going to double crochet. This is the first V stitch. Every row consists of V stitches and just solid double crochet stitches all worked in a row. So one side will be all V stitches and then you switch to the solid double crochet and then back to V stitches and then back to solid double crochet. So rows one and two, we have to kind of pay attention, but from rows three and onwards, it's pretty self-explanatory. So the V-stitch counts as side one. We're gonna chain two for the corner. Into the ring, we're gonna work three double crochet. So that's side two. I recommend if you have trouble keeping track of your corners to just go back and put a stitch marker on the chain two corner. Chain two for corner number two. And into that ring, we're gonna work a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now I'm working over top of my short tail. You don't have to do that. You can always wait until the end to weave in your tails, but I just find it quicker and more efficient to work over top of them. I am marking my chain two corner space with another stitch marker so I can keep track of them. Chain two, this becomes corner number three, and three more double crochet all into that ring. There's three double crochet. I'm also gonna mark that chain two corner that's corner number three. I've got one, two, three. I have a V-stitch, three double crochet, a V-stitch, and three double crochet. They're all separated by chain twos, which means I need to chain two more to make corner number four before I join with a slip stitch to the third chain. So one, two, three, find the third chain and join with a slip stitch. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna mark out that corner because this pattern has a lot of extra little spaces in it and it can be a little confusing for the first couple of rows. So I'm gonna put it down, I'm gonna find those corner spaces and just pull them out so I can see my little square beginning. If you wanted to change colors at this point, after joining with a slip stitch to the third chain of the chain four, you could snip your yarn, fasten off, weave in your tail if you wanted or leave it till the end, and then rejoin your new color in this corner over here. But that's only if you're changing colors and I'm not ready to do that just yet. If you're not changing colors, you wanna get over to this corner space here. So we're just going to very loosely, not tightly, slip stitch into that chain one space in the middle, slip stitch into the top of that other double crochet, that's the other side of your V-stitch, and then just slip stitch into the corner space. And that brings you into the corner. You can take your stitch marker out. If you're joining a new color, you're already here, you can join with a double crochet or you can join with a slip stitch, chain three. We will chain four. So join with a slip stitch, chain four, I should say, or if you've just slip stitched into the corner, like I have, chain four. So every row of this pattern begins with a chain four. So if you're changing colors, join your yarn with a double crochet, 
and then chain one, or join your yarn in the corner with a slip stitch, chain four. Always make sure you're joining in the corner that's right after that first V stitch. So you always wanna be over here when you start the row. If you're not changing colors like me, you slip stitch across and into that corner space. Every row begins with this chain four. Chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one. Double crochet once more into that corner space, and that's the first V stitch. It's on the V stitch side. You have two V stitches sides. They oppose each other, and you've got two sides of just solid double crochet. They also sit opposite each other. So you begin the row in the corner right next to a V stitch. You begin with a V stitch and chain two. This is your new corner, and very important, before you leave the corner, you're going to double crochet twice. Two double crochet. So on solid double crochet sides, your corner spaces get two double crochet, not three. So a corner to start the row, V-stitch, chain two, two double crochet. Before you leave, maybe put that marker back on the chain two corner space. It really does help kind of keep track of where the corners are. We're going to double crochet in each of those stitches from the previous row. That brings us up to a corner. It's nice to have it marked. Into the corner space on the solid double crochet side, you work two double crochet. So just to keep track, on the solid double crochet side in row one, you had three double crochet. On the solid double crochet side in row two, you'll have seven double crochet on both sides when you're finished row two. Your V-stitch side starts with a one V-stitch in row one, and you'll have two V-stitches in row two. We'll explain that a bit in a moment. Chain two, that creates your new corner. Now you are on a V-stitch side, so you work double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that corner space. That's your V-stitch. Before you leave, put your little stitch marker back. On V-stitch sides, when you are working across the side, you want to chain one for a little spacer. That just gives you a little bit of room to breathe as you hop over top of the V-stitch below. Since this is only row two, the next corner or space we get to, I should say, is a corner space. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out and I'm gonna work a V-stitch into it. I'm on a V-stitch side, so the corner starts with a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So, last corner, there were two double crochets for the solid double crochet side. Chain two, marked it with our stitch marker. Before we left, V-stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Chain one to hop over top of the little V-stitch from the previous row, and then into the next corner, a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Chain two, this creates your new corner. And before you leave, now we're on a solid double crochet side, two double crochet, just two. Okay, I'm gonna mark that chain two space with my stitch marker. And it's just like before, you're gonna double crochet into each of these stitches. When you get to the next corner, you're gonna work two double crochet, only two, because you're on the solid double crochet side and the corners on a solid double crochet side only get two double crochet, chain two, and now you're on a V-stitch side, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And before you know it, you've finished row two. Chain one, don't forget your little chain one spacer, you gotta hop over top of the V-stitch below. I'm just gonna take that out for a second. Find the third chain of the chain four that began the row, or if you joined with a double crochet, you're joining to the top of that double crochet stitch. I'm gonna put my stitch markers back in just so I can mark out those four corners. And here's where we are. V-stitches are clearly on a V-stitch side now, 
solid double crochets are on a solid double crochet side. So there's your row two that really helps sort of show you what's happening. You have V stitches opposite V stitches, solid double crochet opposite solid double crochet. So you can put that down, pull out those four spaces if you want. You should have seven double crochet on each solid double crochet side and two V stitches. But the other way to look at it is this. Excluding your chain two corner spaces, you should have seven stitches here and seven stitches here. Double crochet, chain one double crochet, that's three. The chain one in the middle, four. Double crochet, chain one double crochet, that's three more. That equals seven. So if you're looking across the top, you should have seven stitches, seven stitches, seven stitches, and so on. Excluding your chain two corners, because the chain two corners will always be there. If you're changing colors, you can fasten off. Join your new color with either a slip stitch chain four or a double crochet in the corner space. Remember, it's the corner space after your V-stitch. If not, you can slip stitch across into that chain two corner, and we'll start there. For row three, if you're joining your yarn, you can join it in this corner here with a chain four or a double crochet, whatever's comfortable for you. If you're not changing colors, you're just gonna slip stitch across and into that corner space. So don't make your slip stitches too tight. Take that chain stitch marker out of there. There we go. And here we go. Chain four. Chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one, and double crochet once more into the same space. It's a V stitch to start the row. We're on a V stitch side. Chain two. That brings us to a solid double crochet side. The corner space gets two double crochet. Always two double crochet in the corner on the double crochet, the solid double crochet side. So you, it's bumpered with two double crochet, double crochet in every single stitch, and then two double crochet in the next corner before you chain two, and then you're at a V-stitch side, so you start with a V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch in the middle, chain one, and so on. Well, I'll catch up, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We're gonna double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. When you're leaving the corner on a solid double crochet side, pull back to make sure you expose the top of that first stitch. You don't want to miss it. The solid double crochet sides of this design will increase by four double crochet per double crochet side per row. So the solid double crochet side will always increase by four, and you know that because two double crochet go into the corner on either side of all these lovely solid double crochet stitches. So you don't wanna miss that first one because if you do, it'll throw off your count. We're gonna go from seven, which was row two, to 11, at the end of row three per solid double crochet side, or you will have 11 stitches across each side, excluding your chain two corners, all the way around, whether they are solid double crochets or the V stitches, double crochets, chain ones, double crochet. So that's how you know you're on the right track. I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in my corner over here. I'm already over here at the new corner. It's a solid double crochet side, so I start with two double crochet. Chain two, and now I'm on to a V-stitch side. Before I leave the corner, V-stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I have to hop over some V-stitches as I work, so I chain one. There's my spacer. Before I leave, I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in there. Hop over the V-stitch. I'm looking for the next space between V-stitches from the previous row, so there's a V-stitch. Here's the space. Double crochet chain one, double crochet. Chain one, because I'm hopping over top of a V-stitch and I'm into a new corner. It's a V-stitch side, so the corner begins with a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I now have three V-stitches across that side. It's row three, I have three V-stitches. If it's row two, you have two V-stitches. If it's row one, you have one V-stitch. It's another way to tell what side you're on. Chain two, that brings me back to a solid double crochet side, so this corner gets two double crochet. Chain one, 
And before I leave, I want to pull back a bit so I can expose the top of that stitch. I don't want to miss it. I'm going to double crochet into each of those seven stitches all the way across. While I think of it, I'll put my stitch marker back in my corner space there. That brings me to the corner. I can work two double crochet into the corner space because I'm finishing a solid double crochet side. So it starts with two in the corner, double crochet in every stitch, two in the corner, chain two, that's your new corner, and now you're on a V-stitch side. V-stitch to start the row, or I should say the side, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one before you leave. I'm just going to stick my stitch marker back in that chain two corner. I've chained one that lets me hop over this V-stitch. I'm going to work the final V-stitch of the row into that space between V-stitches, chain one, and then you want to finish the row by joining with a slip stitch to the third chain, or if you joined with a double crochet to the top of the double crochet. Pull out your four corners. You can really see this open work versus solid work expanding. I just love how this looks. I have one more row of yellow before I change color, but if you want to change color, fasten off and join your yarn in that corner space next to the V-stitch. From here on out, it is very self-explanatory uh, what to do. So if it's a V-stitch side, you know you're working V-stitches. If it's a solid double crochet side, you know you're working solid double crochets. Each V-stitch side gains one new V-stitch per row, per side. So we go from three on the side in row three, we'll go up to four on the side for row four. It's always exactly the same opposite. You're going to gain four new double crochets on a solid double crochet side per side per row. So this is 11 double crochets at the end of row three. Add four, you'll be up to 15 double crochets on the side, the exact same on the opposite side. Every row gains four new double crochets per solid side or eight per row and a new V-stitch per side or two new V-stitches per row. So that's how it goes and the pattern itself doesn't really change. I recommend you always join your yarn if you're changing colors in the chain two space right after your last V-stitch just so you can continue with the pattern. If you're not changing colors, you can just slip stitch across and into that space like I'm doing. Whoops. And if you are going to make a really big version of the square, so we're only using six rows for the squares in this project, but this is another pattern that can grow infinitely larger. If you want to make it really, really big, pro tip, I recommend that when you finish a row, you flip it and you work going the opposite way. So your pattern, you have to sort of change your brain. If you finish a row and you flip it, and you're working backwards, you'd be working backwards across the V-stitches first, and then a solid double crochet row, and then V-stitches and solid double crochet. Join the row, flip it again. You'd be working across the double crochets to start and not the V-stitches, but you need to let the pattern guide you. So if you're staring at a V-stitch row and you're working across it, you do V-stitches. If you're staring at a solid double crochet row, you wanna work double crochets across it. It's pretty easy. Just remember that the double crochet rows are, or should say sides, are bumpered by two double crochet on either side in the corner. And of course the V-stitches are bumpered on either side by V-stitches in the corner. The reason you would change every row is because there's a natural lean that wants to happen when you're always going in the same direction on a square. It just kind of wants to tilt it to that side, whichever direction you're going. If you're left-handed, you're probably going this way. If you're right-handed, you're going this way. After several rows, that lean just starts to show itself. It's not a big deal, but it does drive some people crazy. And the way to get rid of that lean is to flip your work every single row and just always be going the opposite way each row. You will see the other side of the stitches every other row, but that's kind of a neat design option too. So it's not gonna change the pattern so much. It's just gonna change the order in which you would do your V-stitches and your solid double crochets. All right, row four.
We start with a chain four or you're joining your new color. You can join with a double crochet if you want. Chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one. Make sure that chain one is in there if you join with a double crochet and double crochet. So you want to start with a V-stitch. Chain two, we're on to a solid double crochet side. So we start with two double crochet in the corner space. Double crochet sides are always bumpered by two double crochet, two new double crochet in each corner space on either side. Gonna mark my chain two corner space. Double crochet in each stitch across. When you get to the other corner space, you're gonna work a two double crochet, chain two, V-stitch. You're gonna chain one before you leave the corner and you're gonna work V-stitches in between the V-stitches from the previous row. So V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, into a corner, V-stitch, chain two, and then two double crochet. Double crochet in every single stitch all the way across, two double crochet in the corner, chain two. I'm gonna flip it. You'll be back to V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, join. So I'm gonna let you work away at that. The pattern is pretty self-explanatory now. I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. At the end of row four, you should have four V-stitches per side, four chain two corners marked with your stitch markers, two new double crochets in each corner space, bumpering your double crochet sides, your solid double crochet sides, and each side should have 15 stitches, excluding your chain two corners, 15 stitches, that's your double crochets and your chains, 15 stitches, 15 stitches. So that's how that should look. I am now changing colors. So I'm going to snip my yarn. Fasten off. And I'm just gonna pull this yarn across and into my chain two corner space just so I can kind of work over it a little bit. This also isn't necessary. It's just something I kind of like to do because I like to weave in my tails, so to speak, or work over top of them as I go. So I'm gonna leave my little stitch marker out of the corner. Here's my corner. I'm gonna join my new yarn now. I am opting for blue now. So we're gonna take our yarn, start with a slip knot. You can join with a, a double crochet if you want, or if you're like me, a slip stitch and chain four in the corner space that's after that last V stitch. So I'm joining with a slip stitch, I'm gonna chain four. If you didn't change colors, chain four. Chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one. Double crochet once more into that corner space. So you've started with a V-stitch. You're on the V-stitch side, that's a V-stitch. Chain two. I'm gonna work over top of my short tails. Two double crochet into the corner space because you are now on a solid double crochet side. Every solid double crochet side needs to be bumpered by two double crochet in either chain two space on both sides. I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in the corner. Remember to pull back on that stitch so you don't miss the top of it. Double crochet in each stitch all the way across. You'll have 19 double crochets on the solid double crochet side. And we're on row five, so you'll have five V stitches on the V-stitch sides. So that's a good way to make sure that you're on track. You can either count the double crochets as you go or just pause at the end of the side and make sure you've got 19. When you get to the corner, it's two double crochet, chain two, and then V-stitch because you're on a V-stitch side. Chain one before you leave the corner, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain two, because you're in the corner. Start that with two more double crochet in the corner before you leave, double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. Two double crochet over here, you'll have 19 double crochet by the time you're finished with that corner two. Chain two, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, and so on. It is the same pattern repeating itself, and I am just freshening up the colors. I will let you work away at that, and I will see you at the end of row five. At the end of row five, 
you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three or the chain three of the chain four or if you join with a double crochet the top of that double crochet stitch you should have five V stitches across the V stitch sides with chain ones in between you should still have your four chain two corners and now you have 19 double crochets across your solid double crochet sides you can join and fasten off if you're like me I've just snipped my yarn and I'm going to just, again, pull that through a couple stitches. Or if you're not changing colors, just slip stitch across and into the chain two corner space. I'm just going to pull that into the corner. There we go. Then I'll work over top of it for the remainder of the next row. I am changing to white now. So I'll get my stitch marker back in there. Okay. This is row six, it's the last row. There is nothing different about the pattern. We begin the row in the chain two corner space after your last V-stitch. You wanna start with a V-stitch, so that's either a chain four double crochet or a standing double crochet, chain one double crochet. Either way, you wanna start with a V-stitch. Chain two, that's your first corner and you're on to a solid double crochet side, so two double crochet into the corner before you leave. Pull back on those double crochets to make sure that you don't miss the top of the first stitch that you need to work into. Double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. That brings you to the next corner. And remember, you need to bumper your solid double crochet with two more double crochet in the corner space. So into the corner, two double crochet, chain two. That puts you on a V-stitch side. Bow -bow. So after those two double crochet, chain two, V-stitch. Don't forget the chain one. It's what allows you to hop over top of the V-stitch from the previous row. V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one, V-stitch, chain one. You're always double crocheting, chain one, double crocheting, chain one, into the spaces between your V-stitches, into the corner, V-stitch, chain two for the corner, and then two double crochet, because you're on to a solid double crochet side. It's the same pattern. So just keep track. You're adding four new double crochets to each solid double crochet side. So you're going from a stitch count of 19 on that side up to 23. And you're adding one new V-stitch per V-stitch side. You'll have six V-stitches per side because it's row six. I will let you work away at row six. I will catch up with you at the end and we will quickly review the square. At the end of row six, join with a slip stitch to the third chain of the chain four, or if you joined with a double crochet, the top of that double crochet, fasten off. And you can take a moment to weave in all your tails if you have them. I've got one here. I'll leave that in in a moment. You can take out your stitch markers. Let's make a little room here. And because of the way this pattern exists, <laughs> you might find it helpful to just pull out your corners and do a little light blocking with your hand to kind of get it to square up. You are more than welcome to block your squares before you join them, especially if you like to look at a stack of nice, neat squares. Um, I will not be doing any official wash and block or steam blocking until the entire project is put together. But that's just my uh, personal choice. You can do whatever you like. I'm just going to weave this tail in now across the back of some of those similar colored stitches just to get it to sort of disappear. And one more ought to do it. Remember to leave yourself decent length tails of yarn so that you can weave your yarn in back and forth at least three times. That keeps everything from wanting to come undone. There we go. And like I said, you can just take a moment to 
block it out with your hands, get it to lay flat, and you can sort of see how one wants to kind of, the double crochets want to push it widthwise, and the V-stitches want to kind of make it a little bit more narrow. But don't worry, when the whole thing gets stitched to its neighbor, it will stretch or shrink to match. The important thing is that you always have the same number of stitches across each side. So at the end of row six, we went from nine or 23, let me just repeat that, <laughs> row one, three, row two, seven, row three, 11, row four, 15, row five, 19, row six, 23. You will have the same number of stitches running across each side per row, or I should say per row. So if it's three, it's three across each side. If it's row two, it's seven across each side, and so on. Always just don't include your chain two corners. The chain two corners are the same throughout every single square in this entire pattern. But you wanna make sure that row six has 23 stitches across each side, excluding those chain two corners. So even if it looks a little bit funny before it's blocked or it's stitched together, as long as you've got the right stitch count, it'll match its neighbor square. And that's the doubles and V's granny square. I really like this one. I like how it's got some open work and it's got some closed work. I think if you were gonna make a whole bunch of these for their own blanket, it'd be neat to sort of alternate the direction that the open work is facing, sort of all over the blanket. Uh, it's a cool granny square, but all granny squares are kind of cool. <laughs> If you'd like to share a photo with us uh, or with the community at large, please feel free to pop into our Etsy shop and message seller. You can click on message seller and you can click on the photo icon button and it'll let you upload or take a photograph. And if it's okay to share with the community in a community post here on YouTube, please let us know in your message. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay magical, and we'll see you soon. Bye guys. Hi everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.